Hey everyone, Nick here. So in this video, I'm gonna be talking about scoped model. So scope model is an extremely popular Flutter package. Um, and what it does is it makes working with state a lot easier. Specifically, when you have a lot of widgets sharing the same state, uh, and those widgets are split up into many files, scope model gives you an easy way to define all those state variables into one simple file and also your business logic that might relate to that state into that same file. So your widgets stay nice and clean um, and have nice you have nice separation of concern. So the widgets uh, are only controlling what's rendered on the screen and your scoped model file has all the state variables and all the business logic totally separated. So that's what scope model is. Okay, so let's dive into the app that I created for this tutorial. So this app is very, very simple and it's very, very contrived because I want um, everyone to understand uh, scope model very easily. Um, but um, so let me just show you what it is. So I have here, hello world with scope model. So you can find the code on GitHub. I have a link to it in the show notes and it takes the um, boilerplate app that you get um, from the flutter create command and it's adapted to have three text labels. Each one of these labels here, widget one, two, and three, is a separate widget, so totally separate files. Um, each one of them has, they display some text and they display the value of a counter. And as I click on this button here, each one is gonna increment the counter in its own way, um, pulling from the centralized state that is provided by our scoped model. So. Let's dive into the code. We won't be coding this together because it's it's gonna take too long. So I'm gonna walk through the code very simply. I'm also gonna show you how I kind of organize my code personally, and I think that can help a lot of people. So main.dart is very, very simple. It just has run app, and it's instantiating our app um, that is the main kind of widget that wraps everything up um, in our app. So I have this class, it's a stateless widget called app. And um, all it does is it returns a material app widget here. So that's app. And every app that I create in Flutter, um, it has these two files, main.dart and app.dart. That way I have things kind of cleanly separated my from my between my entry point and my main um, kind of umbrella widget for the entire app. Another thing it defines is the home screen. So material app has this parameter home. This is my home screen. So let's dive into the home page. So in the home page, I have, this is how I organize my code. I have a screens directory, which is all my main screens. Each screen has its own directory. So I'm gonna call this screen home. It's just very contrived. It would probably be more realistic in, an, in a real app. And home is a stateless widget. Even though this screen is managing state, um, and is reacting to state, um, it's not managing it, it's still gonna be a stateless widget. And that's really nice about uh, scope model because um, scope model, you don't have to implement stateful widgets, which is kind of annoying boilerplate code that you have to write. And, and it's, it's kind of overly complex. So that's one really nice benefit of using scope model. So here in my screen, I have a, um, a scaffold here with an app bar and a body. So the app bar is at the top, body's in the center, and I have widget one, two, and three. And then I have my floating action button. So this uh, widget one, two, and three, this is what it's gonna do. So widget one, and just ignore this scope model descendant for now, I'll explain that. Widget one at the end of the day is gonna uh, render some text. It's gonna say widget one, counter is, and then the value of some counter, right? Um, this value is coming from my shared state, and I'll dive into that in a second. Widget two displays the similar thing, but it just says widget two counter is, and then whatever the value of counter two is. Widget three is gonna say widget three counter is, and what are the value counter three is? So where are these counter one, two, and three values coming from? Well, basically I have um, a models directory number one, and in my models directory, I have a class called counter. All that does is it stores a variable called count, and that keeps track of count. So every instance of counter will keep track of itself. 
But then I have a scoped models directory here. And the reason why I call it scoped models, um, even though there's a widget named scope model, it's not to be confused with that, is because these are models that at the end of the day, they are models, but they contain something that encapsulates our state and some core business logic. So this is super contrived, but this is what I call um, my scoped counter. So every scoped model I implement will be called um, scoped whatever. It extends something called model. So model is offered um, by the scope model library. And every instance here, um, I have three, I have three variables basically, counter one, counter two, and counter three. So these, these are for each of my widgets. And so these will keep track of each their own counter variable. Then I have this increment uh, method. So every time, let me go back to that screen, every time I hit this floating action button, I'm going to say scoped counter increment, and it's going to execute that business logic that you see there. So where am I getting scoped counter from? So in order to use scope model, um, every like anywhere you want to react to that um, scope model state updates, um, you're going to you're going to have a single instance for your entire app, right? So in here, my home page, I'm just creating it on the home page level, I'm going to have it as a member of my home page. In a more realistic app, um, where you probably won't do this. Um, but this is a, just a simple example. So I instantiate my scope model. And then any widgets that need to react to my scope um, changes to my scope model and receive that data, I have to wrap that all of them in a scoped model widget. So this is also something that um, the scope model library provides. So you just say scope model of type and then provide the type of your scope model that you implemented. So my scope model is of type scoped counter. And there's two parameters. One is the model. So I'm going to pass it the instance of my scope model you see above here. And then the child is the rest of the widget that I'm implementing. So this is the rest of my screen. So I'm wrapping this screen in a scoped model and I'm providing it an instance of that scope model. Um, so then I have my widget logic. And what's cool here is normally when I hit this button and I say increment, if this was a stateful widget, um, I would have to have the logic all like all convoluted here in the same file. It's not cleanly separated. Also, my widget one, two, and three will also have to be stateful widgets um, because they would have to manage their own state. But with scope model, if this widget wants to receive a state update and react to state, because widget one is wrapped with a scope model here, um, and I, it knows about it, the scoped counter instance, it can receive updates from my scope model by using a, another special widget, which is called scope model descendant. So this means that whatever I wrap this in, it's a descendant of my scope model, meaning whenever that data changes, it can receive updates to that data. The final thing I want to explain is a scope model descendant will provide these variables here. And this model variable represents the exact scope model I've created. So wherever in my widget, I can just say model dot and then I can access any instant, any member of my scope model. So counter one, as you remember, I'm going to click on it. Counter one is a member of my scope model. Same thing if I open widget number two, right? I'm accessing my scope model and then I'm accessing counter two, uh, the counter two member. So each of these has its own state. So counter two is its own counter. And when I hit increment, it increments here. So as you can see, and let me demonstrate it to you, I click it and it increments in its own way. So again, uh, just to recap before I finish here, um, we have main.dart, that's the entry point. We have app.dart, which uh, has my material app. We have our home page here. Um, we instantiate a scoped model, right? Um, and then we wrap whatever needs to use that scope model with a widget called scope model, right? Of type, whatever we implemented. 
And then um, whatever widgets want to receive updates to that scope model, use the scope model descendant widget. And you wrap whatever you need with the scope model descendant. So I hope you have a good sense of scope model. You have to kind of implement it on your own with your own app to really understand it. Uh, it's normal to be a bit confused in the beginning, but I think personally it's a great start for a lot of simple or even kind of medium uh, complexity apps. And uh, there's a there's very minimal boilerplate to working with state across many many different widgets. So thanks for watching.